Up until the end of last year, if an active duty service member experienced some sort of medical malpractice at a military facility, they felt they couldn't do anything about it. They weren't allowed to file a lawsuit to get compensated by the government. Then in December, Congress passed a law. It allows those in the military to file a claim and the Department of Defense to pay that claim if medical malpractice is found. It was considered a history-making change, but 10 months later, not a single dollar has been paid. We stood over our son's grave. On that day, they're handing me the flag. And I just remember being right, you know, you see it in movies. You see it in movies. Then you think, no, it's, no, it's not gonna be. It's, it, this isn't gonna happen to us. Our son was never deployed. He lost his life in a military hospital in the United States. Almost three years after their son's death, Dana and Susie Way say they're still fighting to hold the military accountable. Corman Jordan Way went in for shoulder surgery at the Naval Hospital where he was stationed in California. He was prescribed oxycodone for the pain and sent home. Hours later, he would return to the same Naval Hospital's emergency room. Medical records show the Maryland native was sobbing and in very obvious distress. An NCIS investigation of Jordan's death says the surgeon okayed more pain meds in the ER. And again, when Jordan called the next day, saying he was still in extreme pain. The autopsy report confirms the 23-year-old shipmates monitored his use of the opioids. The pain never went away but yet the medication was shutting him down. And he knew that there was something wrong and he sought help. Investigators say their review revealed 90 pills of oxycodone were prescribed and Jordan took 82 of them as prescribed over about four days. Jordan's roommates found him unresponsive. He died four days after his surgery. And the pain medication worked so well, my son never woke up again. Taking exactly what the doctor told him to do, reaching out for help. Dana and Susie were at home in Mount Airy, Maryland throughout all of this. It took more than a year for them to find out all the details of what happened to their son. Records show Jordan took the pain medication exactly as doctors told him to and the medical examiner eventually ruled the cause of death as opioid toxicity. Something had to be done. Our son's life was taken from him. It was absolute medical uh, malpractice and negligence. Up until December of last year, the Ways had no way to hold the military financially accountable for this. That's because of something called the Ferris Doctrine. Part of that law changed because of this man's fight. Sergeant First Class Richard Stasekel's cancer was never diagnosed by an Army doctor. Service members still can't sue for medical malpractice. But after hearing his story, Congress passed a law requiring the Department of Defense to create a process for service members to file claims. So when President Trump signed that, for the first time, Jordan's voice in my ear silenced because before it was a constant, mom, mom, tell them, tell them, you've got to do something. You've got to do something. I did nothing wrong. Tell them. And there was hope. The Ways filed their claim in January. You could pay me every gold bar in, in the world and it's not going to bring my son back. It is, it is not about the money. It is, it is about holding people accountable to do the right things. They haven't gotten a decision on it. We've been going back and forth with DOD for weeks now, trying to get answers as to why the process is taking so long. They wouldn't go on camera, but a spokesperson tells me development of the rule is well underway and they are working diligently to publish it. She says people can file claims now, but they won't be processed 
and paid until the procedure is established. She would not, however, give an exact timeline for when that might happen. We're in this world of wait, you know, hurry up and wait, literally. Natalie Kawam of the whistleblower law firm represents the Ways and other families and service members like them. She lobbied for the law change. It's not their fault that some DOD provider had committed a malpractice on them or were negligent when they were taking care of them. So now we're trying to give them the rights that they're owed. So far, her firm has filed 112 claims. We got this bill passed. Where is their compensation? Where is their right to be made whole. Every family deserves to get what they're entitled to. To delay that is delaying their closure. Back at Jordan's childhood home, the Ways are hoping for that closure and for protection for the service members who served alongside their son. My son's dead. My son is dead. But I don't want your Jordan and our viewers Jordans to have to go through this. I want your Jordans to have a voice. A DOD report to Congress said it is targeting September 30th to issue the rule. A spokesperson for the Naval Hospital said they know about the claim, but they can't comment on pending administrative actions. His statement reads, Naval Hospital 29 Palms is committed to providing the best care possible to our patients, a responsibility we take very seriously.